Okay. I think we're good. Um, all right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, I know it's an off night for us, but uh, next week we have town meeting and a lot of other things going on. So just to avoid conflicts with time and audience and everything else, we, we came together tonight. So you'll have next Tuesday off. Um, so I want to start with Pledge of Allegiance, if we could. Sure. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wicked delay on. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening and talking, and it's very tough. Um, Adam, congratulations. Re-election. Thank you. You get sworn in already? I did tonight. All right, good. Excellent. Nicely done. Um, just in time. Just in time, yep. Um, so just because this is a recorded video, Mary, I just want to take attendance. We have all our board members present. Elaine, myself, Alani, Sheila, and Adam. And you, of course. That's it? Uh, yep. Um, we've got a couple of Form A's that we've got to go through. We've got a couple of applications for zoning that we're going to go through as well. We've got invoices to pay, minutes to vote on. Um, I've got a letter from the DPW that I'll read. And I've got a letter from Ross Engineering. But I also have um, Richard Rosen was looking to release an additional lot for Vincent Street. Now, Carl Garvey is representing two of the four A's and he's not gonna be here tonight. So I'll go through and I'll explain what we've got going on and I'll try to show it up on the screen. Um, you all should have copies of it, but they're probably very small, hard to see. Um, Richard Rosen is also not gonna be on the webcast for his lot release. So I'll explain what he's doing there as well. Um, and we start with Richard Rosen. Richard Rosen is looking for, oh, I didn't bring a copy of that one, Mary. Uh -oh. He's looking for release mm -hmm. on one of the lots. Um, he actually had them mixed up which ones he wanted to do, but he's just going to release this one and leave the remaining two for. Right. Lot four. He wants to release lot four, okay. Uh, today, I went in this morning and I met with Mary and I went in and signed paperwork that could go one way. If it doesn't, she'll hold on to it. Um, just in preparation, make sure we get those signatures. So the lot release, we need to get a majority of the board to sign that. Um, so three out of five is really all we need to do that. Um, so releasing lot number four and holding the remaining lots for the bond until such time that he wants to come in and release the last two lots, then he'll put up a cash bond or an insurance bond or, or whatever means and methods he's gonna have, but he's gonna put something against it. Um, so what we need to do is I need a vote or a motion by anybody who wants to make a motion to approve that releasing lot number four and retaining the last two lots on Vincent Street um, for the bond for Vincent. Anybody? Uh, lot number four. I'm sorry? You I'll make muted. a motion to release. Am I muted? I don't think you were muted. muted. You're, you're unmuted okay. now. Okay. All right. So a motion has been made by Sheila to release lot number four and hold the remaining two lots uh, for the bond until such time Mr. Rosen can put up the cash bond. Do I, any further discussion? Do I hear a second? I'll second. Seconded by Adam. All those in favor? And I'll go around doing a unanimous you know, roll call for, for who's voting in favor and against. So I'll, Sheila? In favor. Favor, okay. Adam? In favor. Elaine? In favor. Lonnie? In favor. And I am in favor, so that's unanimous. Okay. So, there's one. 
The next one is a Form A. Kyle Garvey did the plans up. Uh, let me see if there's a way I can share it. But, um, so what's happening is, I believe it's Ken Sweezy, but it's Sweezy, yeah, Ken Sweezy Jr., 233 Bedford Street. Uh, engineers, Carl Garvey. Uh, what they're looking to do is there's three lots that they want to combine into one. Um, you know, it's for the business. Part of one of the lots overlaps limited industrial and it also overlaps into residential. Hmm. But um, zoning board had a meeting and basically approved that. So from my understanding, uh, let me see, bear with me a second. Uh, what did I do with it? Sorry. Uh, I have it up on my screen if you want me to share my screen, if it's easier for you. Um, I think I might have it. Let me see if I can do it. If I can't do it, I'll, I'll beg you to do it. <laughs> um, of course, this is different than what I'm used to. Where is the share? Share screen, where it says share screen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, let me let me know if you can, can see it. Yeah, I got it now. Yeah, it's yeah, been yeah. a long day. I'm sorry. Yeah. So sometimes. Right now, this is Ken Sweezy's property. Okay, lot number lot B. Okay. Uh, apparently, he is acquired or is in process of acquiring lot A and parcel E. And what he's looking to do is make this all one parcel for. I would imagine it's for his business. Um, so that's what he's got before us. So what we need to do is three parcels of land. He did give Mary a check, but Mary's got to let Kyle know that he's got to pay for three parcels. So it's a matter of once we get the balance on that check, whatever we vote, you know, if we vote in favor for it, then we can release that. Um, so I need to have a motion if we're going to approve the form A and that it, now here's the thing with form A's. What we need to do is when we do make a motion to approve, if that's what we go for, we have to make it clear that we're approving it and it does not fall under subdivision control law. Uh, so that's the key element to it. Um, so. I entertain a motion if anybody has one. What does the subdivision, what you, what you said, what does that mean? He can't subdivide it again after he combines them Yeah, all? I mean, what happens is you're voting to make this all one parcel of land. Yep. Now, he could make it condominiums. He could make it for a business. He could just make it an open field if he wanted to. Okay. What you're doing is, it, it's like the development near your, your house that's going up. Um, you know, if someone wanted to cut up the land or do something, uh, you know, that is a subdivision. So then they have to provide a definitive subdivision plan to our board for the subdivision. Okay. So that particular parcel, um, you know, it, it was one parcel of land. It remained one parcel of land and the zoning board voted to allow it to put in condominiums right. with HOAs and all that. But if someone came before us to cut it up, to break it up into 18 residential lots, and if they said, we want to do a Form A to just break it all up, well, that's, that's subdivision. And that has to follow the rules and regulations of the subdivision. Okay. So what this is, is this means that we're not looking for a definitive subdivision plan. We're not granting permission for him to build houses on this and do all kinds of other things other than what has been asked for in any kind of relief in a zoning. Okay. Okay. All right. Eric? So, yeah. It's Elaine. Do we know Elaine? which lot is currently residential? Right back here in the very back. If you can see where my cursor is moving. I can. That's, I, mean, I can actually zoom in. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> Again, long day. <laughs> so, so here's the line for residential and limited industrial. Limited okay. industrial goes up towards 18. Um, 
I thought there was some that- buffer strip for business, general business out here, but um, nonetheless, that's where that line is. Now, what's he going to do back there? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I mean, he could use it for storage. As long as he's not creating any kind of problems back here for the residents, you know, you hope he's not out there cutting wood and all that stuff and creating all kinds of issues. Yeah. I mean, the look of that, it's probably more for storage for his supplies because he's going to want to, and I'm just speculating, but he's going to want to do all of his other assembly and work up here. It makes more sense. But, so will, will it all be zoned as commercial once it's combined? It will all be zoned as commercial, yes. Okay. Now here's the highway business right here. This is the line for highway business and limited industrial. What does Sweezy actually do? I don't know who he is. He fences. does fences. Okay. Oh, he's I see them. He's on. I saw him in Brockton or something, right? Yeah, he's he's across. I think he's a little bit diagonal, but he's up by where um, uh, the bike barn is. Okay. Yeah, I've never seen him now. All right, I know who it is. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious. That's all. Okay. Oh. I have no more questions. Okay. <laughs> Anybody want to make a motion to approve? I'll make the motion to approve. Okay. I'm making a motion to approve that this does not fall under subdivision control. Yes. Do I hear a second? Anybody? I'll second it. It's Elaine. Oh, Elaine. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Elaine seconds it. All those in favor? And again, I'll go around. Lonnie? Yes. Lonnie is in favor. Elaine? In favor. Elaine's in favor. Sheila? Again, you're a mute. (laughs) (laughs) You can raise your hand if you're in favor, if you have trouble. I'm in favor. Sheila's in favor. Adam? In favor. Adam's in favor. And I am in favor. Okay, good. All right, the next parcel, let me bring that up. Um, This is Cushing, and the application is for William and Kathleen Cushing. Paul Garvey is the engineer. And again, this is another, it's called an ANR subdivision plan, which is approval not required. And what they're looking to do is take one parcel of land, which is this, whole thing and divide it into two. Um, It says property on north side of Pine Street shown on his assessor's map 18B block 108 plot 12 comma 134 and 13B. So I guess this one is not that it matters. I mean, they're looking to subdivide it for a family member. Um, but that should have no bearing on what we're talking about. It's a matter of looking at the property and seeing if it's, you know, it's, do you agree with them subdividing it? It looks like it has all of the setback requirements. Yeah. Um, good size, large spot and acre. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's got the frontage. Yeah. You know, you don't know what they're putting on it. They could put a house right in the middle of it, but there is a an existing right away here. Okay. So, you know, they may decide they want to put something on it, but if they do, they got to talk to conservation. They got to go to zoning, make sure that all the setbacks are met. Well, they got to go to Bob Carr and make sure the setbacks are all met. Right. Uh, if they need any relief, then they have to go get that relief for whatever they're looking to put in. But just to put it in perspective, this is the size of a house. Right. So, I mean, that's a, that's a very large lot. Yeah. Okay. That's about the same size as my lot. Yeah. A little small. So this is taking one parcel and cutting it into two. And what we're looking for here again is a motion to uh, approve not coming under subdivision control law. Or deny. 
There's just a just a subdivide uh, just a subdivide. It's nothing to do with any buildings. Nothing. Just a split of the lots. We are just involved in the subdividing of the properties. Okay. And if the lot is, if we approve it and the lots are conforming for the the zoning of those areas, Bob Curran can give out building permits as needed. Okay. Very simple. That's all down the line. Yep. Okay. So it sounds like you approve that one. Sure. <laughs> All right, so Adam has made a motion for approval and that it does not come under subdivision control law. Yep. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Ilani. Any further discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Sheila. She has no mood. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila's in favor. <laughs> Lani. Yes. Lonnie's in favor. Elaine. In favor. Elaine's in favor. Adam? Yes. And myself. I'm in favor. Okay. I'm cranking Please. through this stuff. All right. We have... Please, you know, he's all looking stuff up. <laughs> True. For reliefs and stuff, you know. Makes it easier. Absolutely. All right. Not be the one that's uh, having a speaker problem. Yeah. No. True. <laughs> um... We have there's a letter from Dennis Smith of the DPW. Um, I don't know if you have a copy of it or not, but I'm going to read it. He emailed it to me a couple of weeks ago, and I, I requested that he send it to Mary through memo. Uh, so he dated it June 16th, or more than a few weeks ago, I guess. Uh, As built plan requirements, DPW Board of Commissioners. Uh, addressed it to me. Mr. Dear Mr. Chairman, I recently had the opportunity to review an 80% ASBIL survey and plan presented by Silver Engineering Associate for Little Comfort Estates. I refer to this plan only as an example, not specifically. I realize this plan is only 80% complete, but I cannot help but notice that there are no ties to water service curb stops or sewer laterals. Water Department of Public Word Works water rules and regulations, Whitman Water Division specifications for installing water mains in 17 states. In the case where a town of Whitman supplies water to an individual house in a development, and after all foregoing conditions are met, before the town accepts road or roads and or utilities, the owner of the development shall furnish this department with the ASBO plans of the development showing the water distribution system with ties and locations. In addition, Town of Whitman DPW, rules and regulations governing the use of sewers, appendices A, specifications for laying building sewer number five, inspection number two states, before final acceptance of li the licensed drain layer shall submit a completion report including an ASBO plan showing the location of the sewer with ties in, to cleanouts and bends and any other information considered pertinent to by the superintendent. Ties to individual house sewer laterals. Water curb stops and sewer lateral ties should be included on the ASBO. I am aware that past DPW administrators have been laxed in enforcing these requirements. However, I am in agreement with the current Department of Public Works Board of Commissioners that the regulations need to be required prior to town accepting any development. Please share this letter with your board applications and engineers. Okay, so that is for development that Steve Egan did. Now I know Steve sent back uh, an email. He wasn't too pleased about it. We sent it off to uh, Patrick for review. So I think for, for this, I think we need to at least look at it and acknowledge it. But I think, um, you know, the next time we have Steve Egan in, we may want to have a discussion about it and go over it a little bit more. Because I think uh, Dennis is right. I, I think some of the, the rules and regulations may have been laxed by in the past. Um, you know, if a developer didn't call the DPW and just kept going, you know, nobody was here really to stop him. He's taking a look at it and he's uncovering things that may be going on that need to be addressed. Um, we, 
it's not that we don't have control, but we have limited control on it because, you know, we're only, we're a part-time board that meets every couple of weeks, but if they're not calling our engineer, we know nothing about it unless we happen to be going by and seeing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and our engineer, they're going to look at it and tell them what they're doing wrong. They're going to notify us. Um, if the contractor at the time says, I don't have time for this, I'm just going to finish it. You know, I mean, it's really hard for us really to do anything other than hold the contractor or the developer uh, accountable for it and bring them in and talk to them. So it may change the way we approach some of these things. Um, so I think what we will need to do is probably need to get Steve Egan in and probably have Patrick in um, and maybe even Dennis Smith so we can have a discussion and see what we're, we've got going on incorrectly and what we need to correct it. Uh, it's not my specialty as far as, you know, contract work goes. Um, so yeah, I, I got a little glossed over as I read through it, but you know, it's, it's something that we have to at least acknowledge and address. So for any, any developments that are coming along, we're going to keep this in mind. Uh, but I think we do have to address this particular one and look at the other developments we've got going on. So uh, maybe we notify our engineers that the, these things have to be looked at. If they don't put out, if they don't mark out where the ties and the laterals are, if somebody comes in to put a gas main in later and a dig safe has no idea where anything is. So they can mark out, they have no idea where the mark outs are. They don't know yeah. where any location is. Even if somebody's water main breaks, they have no when, idea where the curb valves when, are. When the town was doing sewerage back in the nineties, they did it on my other street, which is Candlewick, which is down the street from you, yep. Adam. Uh, and I can't remember how far off, but I think, I think they mentioned like the the existing water lines were eight feet off from where the Asbelt stated yep. they were. So they ran into some issues on the roadway and basically had to rebuild the whole road. Yeah, uh, I think that was back in the day, day when Petnelli was working there. Um, but this here, I think. Um, what I think we should do on this is just to send this to our engineers, Ross Engineering, um, Patrick, who is, what, what are they now? Um, they're not. The PMP still, but they're under Jacob Driscoll as well. Yep, okay. And so we'll send them to both those engineers and just let them be aware uh, for all developments that they should take a look at that and if they know of anything that is um, not being complied with to let our board know and and or the DPW. So would you like anyone like to make a motion to send that memo to our engineers and copy the DPW um, superintendent? I'll make that motion. It's Elaine. Okay. Elaine made a motion. Do I hear a second? Sheila, she waved. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? Okay, Elaine? In favor. favor. Elaine's in favor. Lonnie? In favor. Adam? In favor. Um, Sheila? And I'm in favor as well. Unanimous. Excellent. And I'm sorry, who made the motion? Elaine. Um, Elaine made the motion and Thank Sheila you. seconded. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving right along. No, I still don't hear you, Sheila. <laughs> How so <does> it feel? <laughs> we've got a memo from Ross Engineering dated June 16th. It is for Peyton Place, the definitive subdivision. Some of you may or may not know of Peyton Place. Up behind the library, Billy Peyton and his wife developed it. Um, so a letter reads, Mr. Chairman, on June 16, 2020, I conducted a site inspection in preparation for the installation of the finished course paving Peyton Place. The following preparation work is required for prior to paving. Radial entrance curbing at the intersection of Peyton Place and Harvard Street must be installed along with any grading prep work required to install wheelchair ramps to ADA code. That was number one. Number two, a keyway must be cut into the gutter line pavement at the intersection of Peyton Place and Harvard Street. 
I'll admit, I don't know what a keyway is there, but uh, number three, keyways must be cut into the gutter lines located at these three driveway intersections as the driveways have had the finished course pavement installed. The keyways are required to allow the back of the Cape Cod berm to blend flush with the finished course pavement surface of the driveway. Number four, the driveway entrance at lot one was centered in front of catch basin number two. As such, granite throat stone at the curb transition cannot be installed without obstructing the driveway entrance. The board should vote to either waive or not waive the granite throat stone required at catch basin two to make the decision official. If the board does not waive the throat stone at catch basin two, the driveway for lot one will have to be relocated. Please let me know your decision regarding the throat stone on catch basin two. We appreciate the opportunity of assisting the board with this project. Should you have any questions, please contact our office. Sincerely, Greg Tanzi. So that happens on occasion. Um, there are a few subdivisions where for whatever reason, the contractor or homeowner or both decided to put a driveway in a specific location that dumps out onto a catch basin. The catch basins are, are rated for roadway, but our rules and regulations state that you have to have the granite stone there. Um, That's the so, granite stone with the cutout in it, right? For the water the, to go with through? The, yeah, with the cutout. Yep. Um, I mean, there are, in our town, there are catch basins without the granite. Yep. They have a Cape Cod berm around them. Um, but what we need to do as a board and quite honestly, this was June 16th, so I haven't been down there. There could be a, a final coat of asphalt on there now, for all we know. But uh, this board needs to look at these four conditions. Either say we agree with what Greg has indicated and, you know, do we want to do anything with that driveway or not at this stage? I've seen plenty of the catch basins that have been offset to the driveway that had nothing around them but asphalt. Yep. Except as long as the people who live with that driveway don't mind a puddle, because it's going to end up being a little puddle that doesn't have the throat to drain into. Yep. There isn't going to be much of a problem with it. So I've seen on other places. I run into them all the time with okay. what I do. You know, but that's the only thing I know is that they have, they tend to puddle more. They do. Um, I mean, what we can do is we can, we can make a motion through this as far as conditioning. If, if we wanted to, we could always ask if the DPW would sign off on that or not. If they're, if they're happy to sign off on it, we can vote in favor of it or we can make the decision, but they could come back and argue with us if we decided wrong. Because they're the ones who maintain it. That's the only thing that comes to play. Right. You know, and the rules and regulations are in there for for their, their benefit for the maintenance of these things. It also helps them see where it is for plowing. So yeah. they don't run into it. Yeah, but I mean, on a driveway, they're not really going to come right, up the end of the on driveway, it. So. Right. But is it in the street or is it in the driveway, though? That's what I didn't understand. It's, it's in the street, but it's where the driveway dumps out into it. Okay. So, it'll be it, more for the homeowner than anything. Yeah, I think it would be. But, you know. Uh, so what we'll be looking for is a motion on this to send a memo back to Mr. Tanzi and to send it to Peyton regarding what they have to do or not do for this final coat of asphalt. I don't think it would be a big deal to wave the throat stone for that one catch basin. Okay. It seems like it would make it easier for everybody. It just solve the problem right away without having to relocating anything. Okay. So if I understand you correctly, you're okay with removing the requirement for that granite throat stone. And as long as they have the other requirements in for the ADA compliance and, and the keyways. Yeah, it shouldn't make a it won't make a difference on drainage or any kind. Okay. So did you get that, Mary? Or do you want yeah. me to repeat it? No. Okay. All right. So we got a motion from Adam. Uh, do we hear a second from anybody? I support that. I'll second it. This is Sheila. All right. Sheila's... Oh, now we hear you. 
<laughs> you can hear it now. Yeah, I, I, I called in this time. My, uh, my audio on my computer wasn't working. <laughs> okay. So Sheila seconded. Any further discussion? So I have a question to Adam because he mentioned that it may cause puddling yep. at, the, at the end of the driveway if it's not done the way they prefer. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I don't want to have to have a homeowner move a driveway, but is there any way to um, rectify this? Um, Eric, you mentioned the Cape Cod curbing would help. Well, typically, sidewalks to roadways, there's a Cape Cod berming. And yeah. I haven't been down there, but I would assume that there is Cape Cod berming there if they had just a rough course down, because it does provide a separation between the grass, sidewalk, right. and the roadway. As long as the asphalt is pitched correctly, it should drain properly if they do their job right. So for the homeowner, if they end up with a water issue, who do they have recourse with? I don't know. I can't answer that. I don't know. Ooh. It would still be in the street, so I'd say it would be uh, on the town. Well, it, the developer, it but it is, it is, I mean, you can condition that as long as, um, you know, can add a condition to that if you want to amend your motion. If our engineer feels that all attempts are being made to prevent water issues into the, the homeowner, but uh, usually the driveways are pitched down and Correct, up yes. towards the house. Um, and a lot of times, like I said, the Cape Cod berm is there. So if water's running down the street, you know, there may be occasions where it comes up over the berm, but more often than not, it stays in the street. Right. Yeah, the puddling would be a severe situation on like a real heavy, heavy rain. But eventually it would dissipate. But if the homeowner is probably going to be in favor of it anyway because they don't want to move their driveway. Right. That's true. Lonnie, you got a question? I do. Since we're talking about an issue that involves roadway and drainage, yep. is it possible to run this scenario by Bruce Martin to get his opinion? We could ask him to be the approving factor on that. Yep. I think that would be good. Since we are a problem in the future, I think it'd be good for him to have a say in it. To be involved, okay. yeah, that makes sense. So do we want to re-motion this, um, amend the motion? So we, we've, yeah. we've gone through, we made a motion and we had a second on the motion. So what we would end up having to do is we have to amend the motion because we haven't, but, we have to shoot it down. So basically we'd have to vote it down and then we have to amend the motion, second it, and then vote again. Okay. So we have a, a potential amendment of the motion by Lonnie, which identifies um, as long as Peyton takes care of items one, two, and three on this memo, and as long as Bruce Martin of the DPW yep. is in favor. in favor and approves item number four, Mr. Payton can finish the driveway, the um, paving of the street. If not, alternate means have to be made for that catch basin and or driveway to meet the requirements of the bylaws. The rules and regs. That sounds good. Okay, so that's the amended. So why don't we do this first? Let's let's vote for the first one that Adam motioned for, and Elaine seconded. As you know, is Sheila seconded? I'm sorry. Um, so what we have to do is we vote it down. If you want the amended one to be utilized instead, okay. then we'll come back and we'll vote for the amended one. Okay. So. Let's start with Elaine. Not in favor. Elaine is not in favor. Lonnie. Not in favor. Not in favor. Adam. Not in favor. Not in favor. Sheila. Not in favor. Not in favor. And myself, not in favor. So now we have an amended motion, or actually a new motion, if you would, um, that we need to have Bruce Martin approve that granite curb removal or 
they have to work it in. So we have that on the table now. All right. And this is a memo that goes to Peyton and it also goes to Ross Engineering. And for right now, I would suggest we send it to Bruce Martin as well. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Seconded by Adam. Any further discussion? Okay. Sheila. In favor. Sheila's in favor. Lonnie. In favor. Elaine. In favor. Adam. In favor. And I'm in favor. All right, good. And who made that second one? You, Eric? Who was the motion on the second Lonnie one? Motion was Lonnie. On the second one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Okay, we do have a couple of zoning boards and we do have a bill. I do have something else that is before us that we had way, 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 way back in 07. We had a memo about some streets that we were trying to get accepted. Magnolia Circle, Fieldstone Circle, and Danica Drive. Those three, I think Danica was the only one that has been a, accepted we do have a couple others out there and there's a bond out there but um from my understanding all of the as have been submitted um and i don't know if anybody's going to do anything further than what has been done or not done so what i would like to do i would like to be able to try to get these roadways accepted for the town. I mean, not, it's not going to get on the next warrant, but it'll get on a following warrant. Uh, we can table it if you choose, because I think we have to do some research. There is bond money on these streets. And I think it's not enough to have the, the, for the developer to really bother with it. Not that, it, you know, I'm not saying one's right or the other, but if we could ask town administrator if we could utilize legal to see is there a way that we can actually put these streets forward with the asphalt that we have and ask the developer to sign over the bonds to the town if there are any repairs that need to be made to the street so what that would mean is we probably want the dpw to look at it before we really made a decision and get a letter of recommendation from them. And if that is the case and the developer doesn't really want to mess with it, we just say, okay, sign over the bond. If we can take the bond and, you know, let Frank divvy it up or allocate it, probably have to be on a warrant to allocate those funds for the DPW to use for these streets. I think that's something that that's an option we may be able to go with, but we need to have legal look at that because I don't know what the logistics of it because you're dealing with allocation of money in a budget, which usually has to be voted on. Yeah. Um, capturing money. So if I'm getting a check from a developer, you know, how do I handle that? How does the town handle that? Because uh, we could easily just forego everything and say, we want to put these streets up for acceptance. We've done it before, but if there's money on the table, we could try to, at least utilize it if we need to. Yeah. So. How many streets are there, Eric? It's, it's two streets that really are not accepted yet. Two of these streets here. Magnolia and what was the other one? Fieldstone. Same location. I'm sorry? Same development. Yep. So number one, request that we can use legal counsel to investigate being able to receive bond funds from a developer to forfeit, the, you know, for them to forfeit them to us. And we turn over for the town to vote on for the DPW to allocate those into a budget for those roadways. Provided that we could also get a letter of recommendation from the DPW prior to voting to accept these and the, the funds associated with them. So who wanted to make that a motion? I'll make it. Oh, Lonnie's got that one. 
All right. Thank you, Lonnie. But can, before you go any further, what provided the letter from DPW? What was that last part you said? Providing uh, a letter from DPW um, after inspection of the roadways and recommendation for acceptance. The bigger part is the legal counsel. Yeah, man, we recoup the money. Yeah. I mean, if we can't, we can't. But be nice. if, there's, if there's a means to do it, yeah. You know, the developers not feeling they're bogged down for a small amount of money, and the town gets the benefit of getting a street accepted, and the DBW gets some funds to make some improvements if needed. Yeah. Everything helps these days. Yep. So Lonnie made the motion. Do I hear a second on that? I'll second it. Seconded by Elaine. <laughs> okay. Now we'll go around and get votes. Elaine. In favor. Adam. In favor. Kalani. In favor. Sheila. In favor. And I'm in favor. Unanimous. Yeah. All right. Getting there. Um. Couple of we got a bill, right? We got a bill from was it Ross Engineering? I didn't bring up a copy of it with me. I'm sorry, Mary. Um, we have a bill from yeah, Ross J Jacobs Driscoll, also Ross Engineering, for nine hundred and thirty seven dollars and fifty cents. Put my glasses on because it's small. Ross uh, isn't Jacobs. Yeah. <laughs> so Ross, it was Ross is Ross. Oh no, it's it's not Ross. It's it's okay. not Ross at all. It's Jacob Driscoll. Okay. P -M -P -M -P. Jacob Driscoll, yes. Okay. Um, and it was for Little Comfort Estates for nine hundred and thirty seven dollars fifty cents. Um, email correspondence with Steve Egan and Larry Silva, review of as built plans and legal descriptions and completed construction items, um, as built plan review report marked okay. Marked a uh, marked up description of as built plans, revised bond estimate, and prepare and attend Zoom planning board meeting is all on there. Okay. And we have money. We have money there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have money. We have the bill. Uh, do we hear a motion to make payment on that bill? No motion to pay. Adam has made a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll make the second. All right, Sheila. Sheila we'll seconded second it. <laughs> Further discussion? All right, Sheila. In favor. Lonnie. In favor. Elaine. In favor. Adam. In favor. And I'm in favor. All right. We do yeah, have. Got one. Got, one. We got another bill. It's a reimbursement to me for six dollars and thirty-one cents for files, <laughs> for Manila files. Okay, who wants to reimburse Mary? I'll drop a check off in the morning. <laughs> Adam's gonna pay for it rather than paying his taxes. <laughs> that, is that a motion? I'll make a motion to pay. Adam Mary. made a motion to pay it. So here a second. Second. Oh, I think Elaine beat you. Elaine got second. All those in favor. Adam. In favor. Elaine. In favor. Lonnie. In favor. Sheila. In favor. And myself. I reject it. No, I, I'm in favor of it. <laughs> um, we have some zoning board applications. This is 187 Park Avenue. Before you go any further, Elaine oh. sent an email earlier. That was actually done at the ZBA on the 13th of July, I believe. Okay. So So we really don't have to do anything. It was approved, I bet. Um, was approved. Okay. okay. That one I'll put down. Um, there's another one for Washington Street. Was that? Nope, that one's still not done. Okay. That's true. So this is 382 Washington Street. Residence is A2. Type of structure, existing dwelling, proposed daycare. 
Uh, owner's name, I, I will, I, <laughs> I'm going to try. It's Marie Nata Wizera and good. Jeremy Mudaharem Mwa. Sorry. Owner's address is the same residence, 382 Washington. When did you acquire this property? August 27, 2018. Has application been filed with town clerk? Yes. Has any previous appeal been made? No. Section of bylaw, which relief is requested? Requested Section 55-4 B9 and Section 77-2. Uh, reason for asking relief. Proposed use of a daycare is allowed by special permit. Applicant is converting existing two-car garage into a daycare nursery with outside fence play area. Existing driveway is being revamped for drop-off parking. So let me rotate this so you can see it a, a little bit better. Okay. 90, there we go. There we go. So it's a little folded, I apologize, but okay. technology is better. That was done with my uh, phone. Um, so you're almost 25,000 square feet. Here's the garage they're gonna convert. Here's the existing residence. Uh, propose four parking spaces and a playground area right here. So they're not changing or adding anything. They just just converting. That's yeah. all. So I uh, have a really dumb question, guys. Um, no such why thing. are they looking for relief for seven seven two? Because I feel like that is not hard to achieve. I what must is, be missing something. Do you have your bylaws in front of you? I don't have mine with I me. I do. I do. It's um, site plan requirements. Um, it's actually a page long. So, huh. um, so if it's yeah. site plan, they're looking for a change of use yeah. is what they're doing. So okay. the, the daycare would fall under a state licensing, but the town mm -hmm. still has to look at this as a change in use. This is now a residence slash business on a residential property. Okay. So if the zoning board were to hear it and they say, yeah, we think this is great. You're going to convert it to a nursery. As long as you get the proper paperwork, you can do that. So you now just change the use of that property. But it's allowed by special permit anyway. So wouldn't that accept this property to be? I'm just trying to understand. You're allowed to do it under special permit, but the use of the property, I think that falls into play where they're just having a site plan application to cover all bases. Got it. Okay. Okay. I had a couple of questions. Sure. So I know that they're showing the parking for the proposed daycare, but what if there's already three cars for the house park? They don't that have question. they don't have to show that. They still have to have that. You still need the parking for the house. But I think because it is daycare, there is the ability to overlap the parking because one is more or less night parking. Not right. saying that everybody has a day job. I mean, some people might have a night job. Yeah. But, and it's really not clear in the rules as to that particular because they're based on bedrooms. So you would assume it's based on sleeping, you know, right. the car is right. there when you're sleeping. So in the daytime, there's probably people off working. So is probably a car parked up by the garage, which is the homeowner. And then the four places are not for people to be sitting there while, you know, like if you go to a store, okay, yeah. if you go to the 7-Eleven, you got all the parking spaces, but you're going into the store and doing business. Here, you're just dropping off. So these are temporary parking, um, but it does have to be based on the size of the footprint of the the facility, mm -hmm. like the but one over the at that... Regal we did for the adult daycare, they needed so many parking spots for so many square feet of business. Right. So here's a, so here's the thing though, if we give them, or if we, I know this is an application to the zoning of, uh, zoning board of appeals, but 772, um, you know, whatever they do for parking, where if they're asking for relief for 772, it won't matter what they're doing for parking. 
because it's part of 772 that it has to um, have layout of parking areas. It has uh, to have layout of parking area. Matter. But like, like it was questioned is, it's still a residence. Right. So. It is, but they're looking for relief for 772 and part of that is um, a, pro, um, a site plan and any other drawing shall precisely indicate the following. Um, and I'm looking at under 772D5 and uh, right there it says under E, layout of parking areas. Mm -hmm. So they don't really need to show it really on a plan, they can show a rough, but I get what Alani is asking, but if we you know, are in favor for the relief of 772. As I understand it, um, it doesn't really matter what they show on this plan. They can do like pretty much whatever. But you can make it's comments to that. Candidate. You can make comments to recommend approval or denial of that. If you feel that there should be a better parking arrangement, if you feel that it's a business, where is the dumpster? Right. You know, I mean, if it's daycare, you know, Daycare and nursery. So you're probably dealing with infants and toddlers. Right. You're probably dealing with kids in diapers. Mm -hmm. So there should be a dumpster for that. And it's got to be fenced in. You got to make sure the kids aren't getting at it. But you also have to make sure that the garbage removal company can get to it. Right. So where is that going to go? That's not even shown. Exactly. And that's all under 772. Sorry, Sheila. That's okay. right. What was that? Both no, the, I'll start with Sheila. Employees, they have employee parking. If they have 10 kids, they might need two employee parking spots too. Good point. So this is where we have the opportunity to bring those points up and recommend approval with conditions or we recommend denial because of. I also have one more comment. Yeah. Um, on the plan, as much as I could blow it up, I did not see a uh, measurement to the lot line from the playground area. Can you see one? There is not. So I think that's important that we know that. So this, what I'm doing right now is not our responsibility. Okay. <laughs> that right there says it's 39.06 feet. Right. So length. Well, you go. <laughs> so you yeah, want it from the blue fence? Beam. Blue beam's awesome. Almost you're, eight feet. you're almost eight feet. Now so ten feet minimum. But it's a fence, it's not a structure. So I don't know if there's there's nothing in the bylaws about fencing. Really? Okay. I mean, I although it's, it's all it's, the way to the property line, right? You can bring it all the way to the property line, yeah. But you got children out there. I mean, and, what what does seem to and the reason why I'm is because that is this is a driveway. Exactly, that's why. So I do not know. I haven't been there, so I don't know. I don't know if there's anything here, like bushes or anything as a barrier. I don't know. Exactly. It's bushes. I went by it today. I'm sorry, Did what's there? This is Elaine. I went by the house today and they have it um, roped off where they plan to do the driveway, the um, added parking and the fenced in playground. Mm -hmm. And there's still land before you get to the next neighbor and there is a shrub line. Is okay. there a driveway right here though? I didn't notice Or is it. that I just an easement? I didn't notice a driveway there, but it could be. It could be just a stretch of grass that this person here, Condori, owns. And it could look like it's part of this property here. Yeah. It was quite green to the side of the house where they, okay. and they, they had orange rope showing where the fence was going to be and where the parking was going to be. And it didn't look that big, but mm -hmm. obviously I was just driving by yep so what we have the opportunity here is to make like i said we can make a recommendation with conditions we can make a recommendation for denial it's, it's i'll make a recommend oh does I have a question? yeah 
wouldn't it be up to the um, board that's giving them the license to say how many kids could be there? Children could be there. For the, the daycare licensing itself, yes. Because it's a, it's a stand, I looked at it online too. It's a standard two car garage. It's not very um, big. So they have the ability to park two cars in front of it, as was mentioned. Yep. And they actually could probably put a small dumpster in that um, area where they have the parking, one of those small sideways, and they'd still have turnaround space, unless they have teachers coming. But I don't think yeah. they're going to get that many kids. And if they're running the daycare, they may not have uh, outside employees. Well, I mean, what we could do is we could say, and I'm just going to throw this out there, but if you want to use it, by all means, we can make a recommendation for approval provided that there is enough parking for employees and drop off. There is a dumpster provided for trash in an enclosed fenced area. And if that easement, that 22.13 foot width easement is ever used for anything other than a grass area, that there'd be something a little bit more rugged installed for the protection of the kids in the fence. Yeah. That kind of goes outside of our responsibility, but we can at least make the comment so I'd like to definitely build on that, um, Eric. I think that you pulled out some good um, good points, but um, I think that if we um, just don't really approve the or recommend um, um, the um, um, what am I trying to say here? I also had a long day. I apologize. Okay. But 772, um, to my point before, lists all of our concerns, and they're yep. trying to get relief from that. So if we just say, yeah, we agree with this project, and yes, um, relief for 554B9, but not re uh, relief from 772, I think that really um, covers everything. It will okay. show the um, the layout of parking it will show the buffers and landscaping it'll show the um, dumpster it'll show all of that so um, that's, that's my yeah that's my motion okay so mary i don't know if you got it but um we so recommend approval doing... for section 5 5-4 five b9 yeah but we do not recommend approval or waiver of 7-7-2 seven, seven there you go <laughs> That was well stated, Sheila. I didn't say waiver. <laughs> That's what you meant to say, though. Good. Yes, I was did. Well stated. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so we have motion by <laughs> Sheila. Do we hear a second? I'll second it. I like to. Adam wait. was waiting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Adam second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, let's start with Elaine. In favor. Lonnie? In favor. Adam? In favor. And Sheila? In favor. And I'm in favor too. I forget the rules for how many people per kid. I think it was like six kids, but only two children under two per adult because you can only carry them in one hand each. I don't think we have any jurisdiction on that yeah, one. No, but... I know. I just think it for the employees. That's all. How many kids? Okay. You know, we don't even know how many kids they're going to have there. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a number of things that could happen. I mean, they could expand it into the living room for all you know. So yeah, absolutely. Once you get your foot in the door, right? Yep. Um, okay, so we have minutes. I don't think we have anything other than that. I make a motion we accept those minutes. Okay, motion has been made. By Elaine to accept the minutes is read. And who is present with Sheila, Adam, and Elaine. So do I hear a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Adam. So Elaine? In favor. Adam? In favor. Sheila? In favor. Bonnie, you're abstaining? Yes, I am. And I'm abstaining.
Three in favor, three abstain abstentions. Myself that and Lonnie. Like you can talk yet? That well, would I love voice. Two of two. <laughs> that two was awful. It took me a week to get through that. Two what? Three in favor, two abstaining. That's what I said. I thought no, you said two three. three. Well, <laughs> it's just a number. Fuzzy um, math. <laughs> Mary, do you have anything else? Uh, I think that's it. Looks like we covered everything that I had. Okay. Uh, have you made your announcement? Oh. Yeah, I think you all know, correct? Maybe you don't, that I uh, have been appointed the COA director. So I'm no longer the assistant town clerk. Uh, and I am going to resign as the planning board secretary as well. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I saw that on your email signature when you sent out the planning board minutes. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> so Frank's working on a posting. <laughs> Frank's working on a posting for to get someone in to interview for the position. So what will probably end up happening is we'll probably end up having, I'd imagine we'll probably have a joint meeting with the selectmen to go over that. It's really, it's not, it is a, it's a hired position by the town, but. When I, I got to, hired, just so you know, I, I, if it's changed or whatever, but it's been a long time, but when I get hired, I met just with the planning board. Like okay. people applied, myself included. They picked who they wanted to interview. Um, you know, we came in individually on a one night and they interviewed us all and made their selection. Okay. Well, that would be easier because getting a joint meeting isn't easy. Yeah. So, no. So, we'll, we'll so Mary, see. Mary, I have a question. Okay. Do you have a clone? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but I have been inquiring and putting out there, um, you know, if anybody's interested. Um, for anyone out there, I guess, that might watch this meeting listening, I said it's a great position if you have any um, desire to work within the town. It's a good way to get your foot in the door yep. and kind of get to know people within the town if you're interested in applying for the position. I can hardly write my name. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not looking yeah. for you to do the minutes, Adam. No worry. <laughs> <laughs> Just to suggest, because I literally started with my kids were in preschool in 2002. Wow. So... Wow. It was a, a good little side job, and like I said, I got to meet everybody, and then from there, I've moved along. So, anyone that might have that intention or desire, it's a good way to start. So you got to stop asking people and just kind of do the Three Stooges thing and say all people who want to volunteer well, take one step forward, and then everybody else step back. <laughs> it's gonna get posted, so obviously, who knows? Then you know, you may get more interest in that. But yeah. I have been putting it out there that if anybody was interested or is interested, it's going to be coming available. Absolutely. Good. Well, I hate to see you go, Mary. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I hate to oh, no. Maybe we could do drag out the hiring process so you can't go. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll be doing the minutes. Yeah, exactly, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Um, Absolutely. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, Emily, I did get you proud. It was very lovely. Thank you. Oh, good. 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 <laughs> Wasn't sure of the address. No, nope. I got <laughs> it. Thank you. Good. good. So, our next meeting is August 18th, right? Um, second Tuesday. Well, oh. second meeting Tuesday in August. Uh, would be the 25th, I have. You say the second up. or the fourth? I thought you did the fourth. The fourth. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got it wrong. So we got the tw tw 25th. <laughs> you were on the 18th in between the second and the fourth. <laughs> I did that I, I was, <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking first and third, but it's second and fourth. So fourth <laughs> is the 25th of August. Yes. So right. that will be our next meeting date. Um, any other business anybody want to bring up? So I just want to bring up, because honestly, when you asked me, and I totally forgot that I'm not even going to be doing this, or hopefully somebody will want to do it. Um, it's got to get posted, obviously. Yep. Do you want the posting? I mean, we're going to have to set a time frame and stuff for you guys to interview. Um, mm -hmm. If we have an application, mm -hmm. I think what we want to do is try to find out when everybody can meet, and it can be an off night to do it. If everybody's available to do it, we'll probably have to do it this way. 
Mm -hmm. um, unless things clear up and we can actually get into the town hall and do things, but uh, one step at a time. <laughs> so we could do it through a Zoom meeting like this, um, meet with candidates, talk to them. You know, if we have three candidates, we interview three of them at the same time, okay. uh, go through the process, and then we have a meeting amongst ourselves and see what we feel. Okay. And then we can make the decision and tell Frank that, you know, you know, candidate A, B, or C, whatever. I think we'll okay. be able to do it that way. Yeah, sounds good. good. All right. So we're going to, uh, and, and I know we just said August 25th, but then we run into the whole Tuesday night Selectman FinCom meeting and us all on okay. Zoom. So. It's okay. You know, <laughs> we've been kind of altering our schedule for everybody else. We have to have our meeting on our night. So okay, they, they can work around us. Okay. It's just a matter of Whitman, um, the cable. Well, I mean, I think they've said they had plenty of okay. slots. So, I mean, if it comes up and we don't have a slot, okay, we'll okay. just have to make do with what we can do. Okay. So we're going to go 825 at 7 p.m. Seven work for everybody? Absolutely. I mean, Mary yep. doesn't have to come down from the clerk's office anymore, I so. I don't. <laughs> I could do four. No, I'm joking, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila's like, no way. No way. <laughs> All right. Okay, Lonnie. Well, wait, we're not done yet. Uh-oh. Motion to adjourn by Lonnie. Seconded. Nobody? You guys just want to hang around and play with the computer all night? I'll second it. Second it by Adam. Any further? No, no further discussion. All those in favor? Elaine? In favor. Lonnie? In favor. Adam? In favor. Sheila? In favor. I'm in favor as well. That's unanimous. Stay safe, everyone. Good night. You as well. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank Bye you. Now. Bye. Bye.